is 6 o'clock. Call the meeting for order. It's Monday, September 19th. And um, we have both a select board meeting and a hearing. So starting with the meeting, first we start with general public comment. Anybody here for general public comment other than for the hearing? Susan. Yes. Um, in anticipation of Halloween, I was wondering what steps could be taken to make trick-or-treating safer in the village. Because people fly from here way too fast. And even when children are lined up shoulder to shoulder on the side of the road ready to cross, people mm -hmm. don't stop. So I was hoping that maybe there could be some type of alert system to slow people down, maybe some flashing lights or a fire truck or something. I don't know what that would look like, but I mean, something really, I, I would really appreciate that something could be done, because it's very dangerous. Right, right. <laughs> Both ends, yeah. I had actually recently seen something where it was volunteer people from the neighborhood that were trying to do the crosswalk duty for the evening. And that way, it was kind of lights were provided, and son and dog was safely helping groups of people uh -huh. cross the road. So I thought that was interesting. What uh, what yeah. time what time <coughs> would you think you'd want that? Uh, we have Stefan on the line here. Stefan might be. Able to they do the party at the town hall, the Halloween party. When that sometimes the younger kids come earlier before that, but they're usually accompanied by an adult, and it's pretty well supervised. But once the party ends, the kids spread out through town, and they don't just stay on one side. I mean, they dart back and forth dangerously. I'm not going to name names, but. Yeah, no, I mean, are we talking like from three to seven or something? I don't know what time the party is, but. <coughs> the Stephen, are you uh, here? Can you hear this, Stephen? Uh, I just barely got in. I missed the beginning. <coughs> so, uh, it's uh, ideas for keeping the village safe for Halloween. <coughs> uh, I know. Right. Even, even the truck zones is, is a big help, I think. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. Yeah, the yeah. trucks would be a big help. Yeah, that would be great. And, and then I think some maybe some volunteers with yellow vests to help with crossing. That's a great idea. I yeah. like that too. Yep. Maybe they have headlamps on or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Headlamps tend to blind people, though. Yeah, that'd be something. You know, if you look right at a car, you know, the guy driving obviously you can't see. Was the trick or treat bags with blinking lights? Yeah. More visible. <laughs> oh, I think the trucks would be a huge help. I think that yeah. would really make people aware of activity. That can certainly be arranged. Has it been decided what day, or is it Sunday or Monday? So I read an email a while ago from yeah. the discussion yeah. of the schools yeah. wondering if it's going to be Sunday. What's that? Right? She's asking about. Well, on Monday, I know, but there's some talk about doing it, you know, the, whole, the whole thing on Sunday, you know. Okay. I don't know. I think they tried that once before, splitting it up, and it really didn't go well. Because people did it on both nights, yeah. or one night or the yeah. other. And why, would they, why would they change it? I don't know, was something that came from the school was asking? Yeah. Or something? yeah. And they're asking our the select board's opinion. So I mean, just bringing it up now because we might as well have that opinion as well. My opinion is stay with the tradition. Stay on Halloween. Yeah, yeah right. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. You've got your costume picked out everything already. I don't need one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for the people in the village, we get so much traffic um, that it been two nights of doing the trick or treat. Yeah, so crazy. It's kind of yeah. A lot. <clears throat> Well, that would be great if the trucks could be there. That would be wonderful. And then I, I like the idea of the other people helping too. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I wonder who we could follow up with about the crossing people, the vests and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know who really organizes Halloween in town. Is there any one point person, or is it the school organizes it, or is it just happens? 
I, I thought it was a school. <clears throat> Maybe you can suggest it to them about the crossing people. Even if the grown-ups who were accompanying the children wore something really visible, yeah. you know, it would help. Because it, when it gets dark and, you know, we've had rainy nights, it's just been, yeah. where people are hard to see. And, and yeah. the, the way that people fly through town, I mean, I'm, I'm just amazed at people not slowing down. So the trucks would be a huge help. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Hope they're not plowing snow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else for public comment? Doesn't look like there's anybody online, so <clears throat> let's move on. Speaking of blanking lights, <clears throat> the discussion on the uh, blanking speed limit sign. The, uh, the, the movable the one, yeah. 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 So we need to decide yeah. <clears throat> who to go with. Did you find out? We're talking about the, the, uh, the speed sign that's the trailer. Yes. Yeah, the trailer, yeah, yes. Uh, from my, my research on it, because I did a little research after talking to uh, to the sheriff about it, they like the stalker brand one better. I don't know what the price difference is between that and the other one, but I know that that's their their choice. And it seems like it's, you know, more bang for your buck. As far as uh, analytics that, you know, keep track of how fast you're going and and what car, what time of day the cars are going fast and and that kind of data. So are they familiar with the one from um, work safe. safety, or work safe? I'm not sure. I, I don't know what the one from work safe is, what oh. brand it is. Oh, the Vermac. Is oh, it? it's the Vermac? Vermac, yep. I'm, I don't know that they are or are not familiar with that. OK. I don't, but um, because my understanding was that they are virtually the same unit. And that the, um, the one through WorkSafe can do everything that the Stalker one does. Isn't that what you? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> My concern, Stefan, was, you know, WorkSafe is, is in Berlin, uh, the local company that if we had issues, it would be easier to, to go to them than to deal with somebody from Texas or wherever they come I from. agree with that. Um, I mean, don't know, though. I know the Sheriff's Department has the software and such to, to read the stalker. I don't know about this, this Vermac one, but maybe it's a software that WorkSafe, you know, comes with it. I don't, I don't know much about it as far as that, that problem. I did forward that information on you guys. They do service it. Yeah. Yeah, we could, we could ask those questions before we pull the trigger. I think I forwarded it to everybody. Oh. Um, I can only say, I, uh, you know, that I, you know, I didn't go through all the calculations as far as uh, what everyone can do, <coughs> but I think they're all pretty much. Yeah, I think those two are probably equal, and if they're equal and WorkSafe was lower priced and they're local, I would prefer to stay with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. WorkSafe was lower, I agree. Yeah. I, I can't remember, was it by a lot or it was, uh, substantial? It was under $1,000 difference between the two. Uh -huh. Sheriff's Department it might be good to defer to maybe using something that they want to, they, they recommend. I mean, I'm sure they work with the one that's from Berlin as well. They must, right? Yeah, well, I think 
work they listed a couple other towns that they had they are working with. Was it not, I think it was not part of your information. I don't recall what towns they were. But. In Washington County? In Vermont. Oh, but I mean, uh, you know, not Washington County. You know, the Sheriff's Department would be working with that. Right. right. <coughs> I, you know, I don't know, it's our unit. Right. Supporting local businesses. Supporting local businesses uh, you know, is a big thing that I know that we've always strived for when we can. And, you know, if it, if it makes sense where the price is cheaper and you get the same, you know, the same product, basically. I think the motion to go with WorkSafe with the Versa, Versa map. Versa map, is it? The mm -hmm. map trailer system. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Any more discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay. Good. <clears throat> Maybe we can set it up for Halloween. <laughs> that would be good if we get it. Yeah, if we could maybe have we get it. <clears throat> Okay, uh, moving on to overload restrictions, travel time. Any, any more information on that from the bus barn or anything? Okay, so nothing more to do? Yeah, um, I, I, oh, I would propose that we give them a waiver that we could revoke if, if we found that it was becoming an issue with the with the with the bus with the buses. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I feel like the most all other towns allow trucks on the same road as the buses, so I I feel confident that they can do, you know they can work together to get this done. Mm -hmm. Without putting an unnecessary burden on the truck drivers, right, right. Um, so um, that's my opinion that we should give a waiver to the trucks or give them the issue a permit with the condition that we can revoke at any time mm -hmm. if we have complaints about you know, not respecting the school bus traffic. Right. Okay. I mean, there's still the load limits in mud season and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so right. Uh, mud season is completely different. Right. And you still have all your ag vehicles that that overweight restriction doesn't apply to anyway. So your farm right. trucks can go through at the same time as a school bus, and there's nothing you can do about it. The the the, the ordinance that that was in place it just does it go back to the fifties or something? It goes back a long way. A long way. Yeah. Yeah. Is it something that we at some point should remove as a yeah. as an ordinance and have a different a different ruling or a different yeah I would think memo that understanding for the use of the roads and logging trucks and stuff it'd be maybe something we could uh, have an article for town meeting um, uh, yeah yeah okay. So, you want to make that motion, or is that a motion? I thought I did make the motion. Okay, that's a motion. Okay. Second the motion? I'll, I'll second it. Any more discussion then? All in favor of raise motion to uh, issue a waiver for uh, logging operation? Uh, I think that all the trucks. You know, all, all trucks. trucks. All the trucks. All trucks. Say aye. 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 <clears throat> and I think it would be good to keep it down there and discuss pulling that out of there because at this time it's not. Yeah, having a, a, an article to find yeah. out the best way to, to re, rework the ordinance. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's uh, 6.15. I'm not sure. Dick Valentine is supposed to be here. I just saw a car pull oh, up. Okay. Mm -hmm. we'll we'll wait for <coughs> Is Ron doing this? No. Mm -hmm. uh, no, he's 
available by phone. I can't remember what he was talking about, but I looked and I was like, I know who that no, is. Not more time business, huh? No. No, it's some state. Statewide thing. Because I still don't know on, on the news when they advertise WCAX and they say what's going on in Virgins and then they mention more town. I don't know what, what, what was, was happening, but. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, Richard. Hi. Perfect timing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the man is here, so I will <clears throat> call the hearing to order. Now, the purpose of this hearing is really for Frank Piazza to address the board. Um, but we will go through and I'll give people a chance to uh, speak. Um, I have to apologize, I forgot my glasses, but I will read through the, the order. <clears throat> As uh, dear Mr. Piazza, this is public health order uh, from 18 VSA section 126. Based on the information provided by Richard Valentinetti, health officer for the town of Moortown, the select board finds and concludes that <coughs> background. Frank Piazza owns the multi-unit dwelling at 1013 Route 100B in Moortown, Vermont, hereafter the property. Six units of this multi-unit dwelling residence house approximately six persons. On February 3rd, 2022, health officer for the town of Moortown, Richard Valentinetti, <coughs> conducted an inspection of the property. He inspected units number one, three, five, and six, and common areas of the property. The inspection revealed the issues outlined below. <coughs> Mold. The inspection revealed a leak in the bathroom of Unit 5. The leak is evident in the ceiling of Unit 6, which has visible water damage and mold issues. Mr. Valentinetti saw mold elsewhere in the apartment. Mr. Valentinetti has requested that the ceiling tile of Unit 6 be taken down to determine the extent of the mold on several occasions, but Mr. Piazza has not done so. Mr. Valentinetti inspected the property during a storm and witnessed the roof leak into the second floor hallway. In his experience, this can also cause mold. Failing to remedy, remedy light leaks and allowing mold to develop violates section 10.3 of the Vermont Rental Housing Health Code, which requires the owner to maintain the property free from the regular or periodic appearance of standing water or excessive moisture, which may result in visible mold growth. Next, unsafe conditions, deterioration, and lack of maintenance. <clears throat> First, the railings on the porch of Unit 6 are missing and in need of replacement. A porch without railings is a safety hazard. The floorboards of the Unit 2 porch are in disrepair rotting and have plants growing through them. Tenants, guests, delivery persons, and other access, others access the unit by means of the porch. The porch is a risk to the tenants as well as any delivery person or other members of the public who access the apartment. The sole stairway access to unit three and unit five is too steep and must be replaced. The internal egress in its current condition is a fire and health hazard. In March of 2022, Mr. Picard informed Mr. Valentinetti that the existing stairwell would be replaced with an additional staircase in the rear of the building. This has not been done. Mr. Valentinetti noticed a substantial draft in Unit 6 and Unit 3. 
The bottom four inches of the walls of these units are not insulated. The baseboards are not insulated. This is a public health risk, particularly in winter months. This, also, uh, this is also a violation of Section 10.1 of the Vermont Rental, Hearing, I'm sorry, Rental Housing Health Code, which requires the owner of a dwelling house to maintain weather tight premises. Construction debris and junk is littered throughout the property's yard, <coughs> creating dangerous conditions. The debris includes unusable lumber, glass, and appliances. Section 5531 of the Vermont Rental Housing Health Code requires owners to maintain a dwelling house in a clean and sanitary condition, free of trash, recyclables, and food scraps in all common areas, as well as other parts of the premises not used as a dwelling space. Rodent infestation. Unit 5 was unoccupied and was not cleaned at the time of the inspection. The unit contained old food and was cluttered with discarded items. The unit was infested by mice and mouse droppings were throughout the area, throughout the unit. Mice will enter other portions of the building through walls, ceilings, and other passages. Unit 5 is locked and Mr. Valentini has not been able to reinspect the unit to date. Section 6.1.3 of the Vermont Rent, Rental Housing Health Code provides that <clears throat> the owner of a dwelling shall be responsible for extermination of any infestation in any dwelling unit when infestation in a dwelling unit is caused by his or her failure to maintain the dwelling or infestation exists in two or more of the dwelling units in any dwelling. Mr. Piazza has allowed the infestation to persist <clears throat> in violation of the code. Next, continued public health risks and hazards. The conditions in the building described above are a public health hazard. Six full-time residents are affected by the conditions of the property. Further, members of the public who have access to the property, including delivery persons, are exposed to risk from the conditions of the property. Mr. Piazza has had several opportunities to rectify the public health hazards voluntarily, but has instead allowed the hazards to continue and develop. The conditions throughout the building pose a significant public health risk. The presence of mold from leaks throughout the property could endanger residents. The lack of maintenance of the porches, both railings and floorboards, creates a safety risk. The steep egress of Units 3 and 5 pose a safety risk. The drafts in Unit 6 and Unit 3 create unsafe conditions in winter months. The construction debris throughout the yard creates a hazardous condition. The presence of rodents in the building has a potential to spread disease. Taken together, these conditions amount to a significant risk to the public health. Frank Piazza has the authority to address these problems. Mr. Piazza has allowed the problems described above to develop and worsen over the past eight months. After the inspection, Mr. Piazza had several opportunities for voluntary compliance. Mr. Valentinetti sent a letter detailing the issues to Mr. Piazza, which was delivered on February 17, 2022. Mr. Valentinetti sent a follow-up letter on March 11, 2022, also asking for a progress report on repairs and remediation. Mr. Valentinetti sent an email to Jason Picard on March 22, March 22, 2022. A brief progress report was sent in response from Mr. Picard to Mr. Valentinetti on June 8, 2022. Mr. Valentinetti again asked Mr. Piazza to address the remaining issues in a July 1, 2022 letter. To date, Mr. Piazza has not addressed the issues described above. The above described violations continue to date. <clears throat> the select board of the town of Moortown, pursuant to 18 VSA, section 126, and other applicable authority, orders that on or before October 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall fix the leak in Unit 5 
and remove the ceiling tile in Unit 6 to determine the extent of the lack of the leak and the extent of mold. Mr. Piazza shall remove it and remediate any mold by the same date. On or before October 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall clean Unit 5 and eradicate the rodent infestation in the unit. On or before October 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall replace the porch railing of Unit 6 with an adequate railing fully meeting the requirements of the Vermont Fire and Building Safety Code and NFPA 101 Section 7.2.2.4.6. On or before October 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall replace the Unit 2 porch with a porch fully meeting the requirements of the Vermont Fire and Building Safety Code. On or before October 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall remove the construction debris throughout the yard. On or before October 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall develop and deliver to the health officer a plan to replace the egress stairway to Units 3 and 5. The egress shall be replaced by May 15, 2023. On or before October 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall develop and deliver to the health officer a plan to repair the leak in the roof of the building. The leak shall be fixed by May 15, 2023. On or before November 15, 2022, Mr. Piazza shall fully insulate Unit 3 and Unit 6, <coughs> including the baseboards where the draft was detected. Mr. Piazza shall allow and cooperate with implementation of the health law order. The tenants of the property shall cooperate with Mr. Piazza to assure compliance with this health order. Upon reasonable notice, Mr. Piazza shall allow the health officer to inspect the premises to determine compliance with the, this health order. Inspections shall occur between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. So ordered on September 2nd, 2022, Moortown Select. <clears throat> Dick, would you like to? Yeah, I didn't realize my name uh, was so frequently uh, in this order <laughs> until you read it. <laughs> uh, well, you're the man, right? Yeah. So. <clears throat> no, I think the order speaks for itself. Yeah. It, it, uh, it's just been a difficult year since uh, back in February when I first did an inspection and uh, continually looked for progress reports from either uh, Frank or Frank Piazza or his maintenance person, uh, Jason uh, Picard, and had virtually had none, with the exception of the emails in June. So that's basically uh, uh, where where I stand on this, I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the health order itself. Okay. Any questions from the board first before? No. Okay. Questions from? No, I actually have a question. If, okay. if none of these dates are met or any of this uh, work is performed, I'm a little unclear. What's the What's mm -hmm. the next step? I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't. I'm not familiar with the statutes that are being yeah, uh, referenced to those end up carrying. They're, they're yeah. health. They're health department statutes of the rental court, and they could be enforced by either um, um, state's attorney or the health department or our attorney. I mean, the town could take action. I mean, but what is it? A fine? Is it the could be a, could the be town a, takes it to repairs the property and it's reimbursed? Uh, basically, um, you'd have to go to court and get a judge's decision on what the remedy of the health order is. Could be a fine. Could be any any other. Remedy. No, a fine doesn't fix it. Question, Deborah? Yeah, I'm just curious. We've got several dates that were mentioned, 
as to it needs to be done by October 15th and then, but all the way to May of 2023. So does that mean that people can be living in squalor until May of 2023 and then, then it, the, the shoe drops or uh, does it drop after October 15th? Does it drop again <laughs> after that November date? And who's on any of these dates. In, and other words, in other words, some of these things that go into uh, uh, 2023 are major construction Understood. Issues. I guess my questioning is, we haven't seen any action so far, so uh, do we just let these dates go by until May of 2023. No, October 15th is the first due date. And so whose responsibility is it to let trigger the next step? Who's, who, respons who takes that responsibility and how does, what does that mean that a lawyer gets? I don't understand the process. Well, the town attorney would get involved, but um, there's a number of ways of, of, uh, of dealing with it, including, again, there's a health department regulations. Health department has the ability, the state has the ability to enforce these, as well as uh, the town, or this is, this is basically um, something that the state's attorney could also so is it you who comes back to the select board on October 15th to say nothing's been done and then the select board decides the next act? You know, I'm just confused. Uh, yeah. Well, I haven't had to go through this before, so yeah. <coughs> I'm not sure. I did a lot of enforcement in my, <coughs> my former life, but uh, this is the first time as a health officer, we're taking something, uh, we have the possibility of taking something to court, uh, you know, to get a judge's, uh, uh, a judge's rule. So um, I have to talk to the town attorney, but uh, I'm looking at October uh, 15th as a drop dead date to, in fact, do some of the work that needs to be done right now. And that has just not been done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would it help if we had Ron on the phone? I'm sure, he might be able to answer some of these questions. <coughs> We have quite a few questions here. Okay. Okay. The, the big question was, okay, so what if we've got several things that have to be done by October 15th. Number one, who checks to make sure they're done? And number two, what happens if they're not done? Okay, so you would take it to court to enforce the order. <laughs>
some reason, because you're hearing evidence that, that I, that Vic didn't and, and I didn't, um, you, you do, you do have the authority to change some of the dates and, and then issue it accordingly. Well, I think, I think the, the dates that concern, concern us uh, are the ones where, like there's one that doesn't have to be done, it's the egress of the stairway to units three and five don't have to be replaced, doesn't have to be replaced until May 15th. Uh, and then there's a leak in the roof and that's until May 15th of 2023 as well. You, you can type that if you want or you can loosen it. It's up to the select board's discretion um, based on the evidence that you're hearing. Okay. Okay. Um, we have some questions, Johnny. Did you wanna? Can, can you hang on there? We, we, we may need you again. Into the system. Sure. Yeah, they call into the. If he calls into the system, yeah, that would be a good idea. That would be better. Yeah. yeah. You know what, Ron? Can you uh, call into the, the select board meeting? Um, how do I do that? Uh, just don't go to the website and play for. Yeah, you can uh, go to the, the Zoom. You can go to the Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting. How does, how does he do that? Go, go to the there. website to the agenda. Yeah, that's probably the easiest thing. Just go to the website to the agenda. Okay. And, um, then, you'll see and then click on the, the Zoom and then you'll pop up on the screen. I'll be right there. Okay, good. <clears throat> It's the the in there. I, I it says the leak can wait till May. Yeah, uh, it's it's a leak in that I noticed uh, after I did the original inspections uh, when I went up the staircase. Uh, it, there was a lot of water coming down indicating that the roof had issues. You know, I figured that uh, something like the roof is something which is a major repair, and that's why I was talking about uh, May of 23 to, yeah. to get that But fit. the leak in the unit, he has to do by October. Right. right. Yeah. There's a question. Can I make a comment? Yeah, sure. Dick, I know you haven't witnessed this one actively leaking, but we have video, but there is a, a leak in our unit right above our propane heater and it leaks onto the propane heater and that's been there since we moved in there's water stains on the <coughs> ceilings we've addressed this with mr piazza back in october of 21 so he's been aware of it the photos i actually look back at the photos that he had had that he had sent us before we rented the unit and i did notice that there was signs of that leak there so this is something that's systemic that's been going on for possibly decades Mm -hmm. So I think these due dates are arbitrary. He's not going to meet them. He's already been right. given multiple due dates since February. I don't think that matters. He's not going to do it. Right. And it, winter is coming. So, you know, we all live there. Yeah, it is Ron. Hi. Oh, hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. So um, we have a tenant that says that uh, she feels that since we've had due dates before, he's probably not going to meet these. Um, I don't even know where he is. Has anybody seen him around or anything? Yes. Yes. What do you, what do you know, John? Go ahead. I can address this. Did you want to speak first, or you have your hand up? Oh, I already, I already said what I said, yes, thank you. So I'd like to uh, preface my remarks about commenting on Frank Piazza. Most people here have known him a long time. He's been around for 50 years. He's had a successful business all that time. He's rented property all that time. He's provided housing for lots of people all through this time. Right now, he's an elderly man in failing health. Uh, with those of us who know him well, who are friends of his, been working very hard to try and ameliorate his situation. He's in a very precarious situation. 
and he's uh, unable to address his business affairs correctly. And I think that everyone should understand this, which is the stem of most of these problems. I can't say that you know he was a uh, shining example of the land of all these years, but right now he's in serious trouble. He's been in the hospital. He's been hospitalised two or three times lately. Um, he was quite out of it. He's doing a little bit better now. I have very, very serious concerns about his ongoing health and situation. And what I would recommend, after thinking about the situation, is that he should be dealt with as strictly and as severely as possible in these matters, with the hope that it will bring him around to finally dealing with the matters as they should be dealt with. He needs to be moved out of his house. He's living, you talk about squalor. His house is untenable. Have you been in there? No. No, it's it's, it's a private house. house. It's it's uh, I can't I can't describe how bad it is. It's awful. Uh, I was very worried when he was ill uh, during the month of August that he was a danger to himself and a danger to others when he drives. He seems to have stabilized quite a lot now. The last few days, I'm talking about what's been going on. I should say also, um, I'm talking about him, and he's not here. I'm not authorized to talk about him. You ask me his situation, how he's doing. I'm letting you know this is just Johnny Summers saying what he's seen and my opinions. Please keep that in mind. I have no authority to speak to Frank whatsoever. But I do have a lot of concern for him, as do my friends and my family. So we're trying to do the best thing we can. And as I say, if there's anything we can do to bring him to, not to his senses, but to indicate that this can't go on any further, i.e. by dealing with the matter, matters we're talking about tonight as severely as possible and without any delay. And I think that would be good for him. His doctor recommended he goes into assisted care, he gets uh, legal help to sort out his affairs, he gets someone to deal with his affairs, and then he has a good chance to uh, survive for a while. Failing that, I quote his doctor saying, you'll die and the state will absorb all your problems. And if that's what he wants, we can't uh, stop him from doing that, but I think one of the reasons I came tonight was to see the outcome of this, because I am very concerned about it. And what I say is I think if we deal with this as severely as possible and strictly as possible, and uh, it might help to move him to the place where he realizes he's going to do something. Otherwise, he's going to procrastinate, prevaricate, nothing will get done. Uh, I can assure you of that. And uh, his, his uh, maintenance, so-called maintenance man, can't help very much. He's been there right along and he does what he can, but I don't see any good outcome the way things are going. Unless we, I say we, uh, I'm trying to do things for him. I actually spoke to the uh, Adult Protective Services, as you guys know, I'm an EMT. I'm bound by my licensure to report anything dangerous I see or uh, incorrect with uh, calls that I go on. Uh, Dark Protective Services replied to me they don't deal in self-harm. They suggest the Council on Aging. I've been working with them as well. This is a very serious situation. It's not unique. I'm sure this happens in other places, other times, but this is what we're dealing with now. So I'm actually glad to let you people on the select board know what's going on, give you a better picture of why we're in this situation. Okay. Do you have any more questions? Thanks, John. <clears throat> so, in, um, well, in terms of October 15th, I mean, maybe that's too far away. Maybe it is. So, <clears throat> Mike, Ron? Yeah, it, you know, yeah, it, you know, I think what Johnny just said is 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 helpful context and can uh, is maybe uh, incentive for us to look uh, toward, you know, other remedies to help Frank, but the, the issue here is, is the welfare of his tenants as opposed to Frank's welfare. And so that, that has to be first and foremost what, um, what the select board's considering. And that, but that certainly doesn't mean you should, you should not do things in addition, uh, such as what Johnny suggested. So my concern is for the tenants that if, if the Set a date, and the only way Frank can, or he doesn't meet it, uh, and then he puts his tenants out. I mean, he has that option, right? There's nothing that says he can't say, I'm just not going to deal with it. 
everybody's got to go. Is, is there, or is there something else that I don't know about? Well, there's a legal process for eviction, and he's been trying to evict us illegally since it's retaliatory, since we've been trying to communicate with him since October. He hasn't spoken to us since October of 2021. Um, we've, of course, been looking for other housing options, but I'm sure you're all aware of the housing crisis. And we aren't the only tenants of Frank. He has other buildings that are in the same condition, and he seems, it just seems to be a pattern that he's been doing. Many people have been harmed by this. Many people have been living in mold. Many people have been falling through full floors. And, you know, there's one tenant in that building who hasn't had heat or hot water for four years. And we can't do anything. We have nowhere else to go. We work in this town. We work at the school, we work at the library, we're postal workers. We, I don't know. I mean, we have reached the limit of what we can do. And because we can't communicate with Frank and he's unwilling, to do anything or, or ask for help, we've offered to help him so many times, but he will not communicate with us. So we're, we're at our, I mean, this, we don't want to be here. We just want to live our lives and be a part of the community, but there's really no other options. And we are all at risk of, of homelessness. There, there's nowhere else to go or that we can afford. We would have to relocate and start our lives over, and we just did that. So I, I really, if there's something else that we can do or work together to remedy this. This is the only affordable housing in the area. I would add, and speaking to Frank about his uh, business affairs, I questioned him about how many empty apartments he had, or if everything was fully rented. And he revealed to me that several of his units are empty and not rentable. And to my mind, in this day and age, with a uh, crisis in housing in this valley, and well, throughout the country, throughout the state and right here in this valley, what he's doing is criminal. People need places to live, and thanks to defalcations, places are unavailable. And he's entitled to do that, but because of what's been going on and when we hear this harm to uh, tenants and so on, he should, I say, he should be brought to book with the hope that he will, you know, make a change. But I can't talk to him, I can't get through him. Yeah, I'm not a professional health officer. I also am a health officer in Duxbury, and there's three units over there that are now empty that I'm going to put in order not to have it re-rented until, uh, until it's up to code. So uh, there is a lot of available housing mm -hmm. uh, not, not available. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wrong that this place should be empty. It's up to him, of course, but in this day and age, with his need, <coughs> and it's because he's been deteriorating in his mental and physical conditions, and it's just too bad. And I, you know, the tragedy of this situation is what I would want to express to you guys and see how best we can deal with it. And my suggestion is to be very firm and strict. I mean, Ron, can we change, make the date earlier, that, that, or that you take some action or something? To... You're, you're... You're, you're fully entitled to make the dates earlier, if you want. This is, this is the select boards or the, the town board of health's order, which is the same thing as, as a select board. Um, you're allowed to do what's, what's reasonable. What, uh, what Dick Valentin, Eddie, with our help, suggested, uh, there were suggestions. Um, we, we, we gave the, we gave the select board a template, um, but based on the evidence, you guys can make things stricter, uh, make things looser. Um, it, it, it's up to the select board to, to make the decision. Um, you know, a, again, the issue here are his tenants, um, people with whom, um, Frank has, uh, has basically a contract to, to be able to rent habitable living to. And so it has to be fixed. If for some reason uh, the worst is, is, is to happen to Frank, it falls onto the estate as opposed to, um, you know, some other person. Um, so that you, you've got to keep your eye on, on what the goal is here, which is to, 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 make, to take the, the quickest route to, to a short habitable. Um, well, I think that I would make a recommendation that we change the October date to uh, September 30th date. 
uh, so that we can proceed as quickly as possible in terms of uh, bringing this uh, to September 20th. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. What? should go up. I have a question. Yeah. Come on. Um, as a, a tenant, I think the law says that if the repairs are not done, can they do them and then withhold the rent to cover the expense that they incurred doing the repairs? Yeah, we've been withholding rent since February. You have, okay. Which is why he's trying to evict us and he's been retaliating and threatening us on multiple accounts, which is also uncomfortable. Um, but I also, I'd like to add the, what the price of these repairs would relate to is wouldn't be fair for us to have to pay. Because reasonably, we, even though we are withholding rent and holding that in uh, a separate account, that still wouldn't cover the, the cost of a majority of these repairs. Yeah, because yeah, one concern I have is I don't know how quickly you could find anybody to do the repairs. That's also a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because I mean, I know for a fact that anybody who can do them is, is really busy. Well, he does have a maintenance person. Well, uh, yeah. the yeah. uh, yeah. uh, it doesn't sound like he's. I when we moved in, the, yeah. When we moved in, Jason had promised us that the, it would take two weeks to have railings and the porch fixed and to have the debris cleared because we have animals. So my major concern was glass and nails and construction. Mm -hmm. right? So that was the the first like time that I noticed something was amiss when it was promised two weeks later, and then when I reached out to him about it, it was yeah yeah I'll get to it next week you know I'm busy, and that's just been more of the same. That was October. Right. That was October. If Jason Picard was relied on uh, got on the jobs, this problems these problems wouldn't have arisen. Mm -hmm. Right. That's exactly. your answer right there. Right. Uh, right. But he must get that from Frank, who tells him not to really do it or something, right? No, I think Frank will be pleased. And of course, Frank will say just what John said. You can't get anyone now. Not that he's trying really hard. Mm -hmm. And plus, anyone who's got, you know, anyone today can work for whoever. They're not going to work for Frank. Mm -hmm. right. He has a poor reputation. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a very awkward situation. And plus, I, I, I also believe he's taking Jason's professional opinion on the matter as well. So whatever Jason's on the state of the house, he's probably going to listen to that, or at least that's my impression of that. Mm -hmm. Which is a lot of flex seal gets adjusted. Yeah. He tries to fix everything we can with flex seal. So. Yeah. But also, yeah, each time we interact with Frank, he says that Jason does not communicate with him, and then when you talk with Jason, he's like, it's too hard to come over here and fix things because Frank tries to get all the tenants to fix stuff. And then I have to come and do twice the work to repeat it, like to repeat the, the do the work that I already need to get done. It's just nice to me. So, yeah, random miscommunication. And, I mean, for us, zero communication now with either of them, which is uncomfortable because they still come to the property regularly. They use the dumpster, and so do all those other tenants. And it's just, mm -hmm. that's how we get to meet everyone. And it was just falling up to know and love our neighbors and find out that they're dealing with equal or their own unique set of dangerous circumstances in each unit, but then to meet the people that come by the property to put a check into the slot of the door each month for this person, you, you have a conversation with them and then you quickly find out that they're dealing with the exact same stuff where they are and they're, they're sharing their own stories of parts of their roofs caving in and having to cover hundreds of dollars of plumbing bills just to have toilets that work and then being told, no, I'm never going to reimburse you for this. Like, you you call the professional plumber to come do work right. for you and that doesn't fly. So Frank owes us money as well. Um, we replace things and he has not reimbursed us as well as he stuck us with propane bills when we had a gas leak. And, you know, list goes on that. That's our time and energy that we have to try to get these charges off our bills where he's the one that has all the authority on these accounts. Irving has also said that they're about to take the tanks off the property because they can't deal with them anymore, which means no one will have heat yeah. or hot water. So this is a crisis, and, and we're willing to work with, I mean, we've been willing to work with Frank even the way he is because we understand that the housing crisis is serious. We all need to be involved in creating a solution, but we only have so many resources, and 
I mean, we, we have no power. Um, there's really not much we can do. So whether it's you know repairing this place or coming up with a better idea for housing in the valley, I mean, we'd like to be part of that conversation. This is ridiculous. Well, the reason that I spent September 30th was so that Ron could get ready because we're going to have to go to court anyways on this. Mm -hmm. But if you want it September 19th or 20th, I, I don't care. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure, if, if it seems like we're going to have to go to court on this order, we might as well do it as soon as possible. What do you, what do you think, Ron? You know, so long as it's a reasonable deadline, and, and you know, I've um, just moved it up for the sake of moving it up, but um, if, if it could get done by September 19th, uh, that makes sense. Well, uh, it's uh, that is, we, we don't want to delay things anymore. Today is September 19th. Maybe not September, uh, we get the, you know, September 30th. We get the dick that, that dick, dick just suggested. I mean, what if we use one of the dates you aren't giving him to replace? The, the ceiling, I think, in their unit. I mean, that's well overdue. Well, I jokingly said the 20th when Dick said the 30th. Once again, my view is to provoke Frank, you know, let him know what's going on. Assuming he gets a court order, assuming he sees what's really going on, it might bring him to his senses, it might do nothing, but there's nothing to be gained by waiting until the 30th or the 15th of October, None, nothing whatsoever. That was with, was with with the house, uh, the White House, um, where the curves start. Uh, that didn't have water. When he violated the the health order, uh, we went to court, and uh, that forced compliance right away. No, but he doesn't even have any, now. He doesn't have any living in now either. The one on Hurdle Road, you're talking about. Uh, on 100B, just yeah, just uh, on the corner of hurdle. So, not renting it. It's he's, he you know, but, I, but I've been told is he's trying to sell it oh. so that it becomes a private residence and therefore not under the jurisdiction of the health officer or the health board. There's enough there for the health officer to work on the building here. Yeah. No, I'm talking about I know, that. but it doesn't matter if that one's. Oh, yeah. Right. There's plenty to. Right. So I think Ron's point was that when he got, 10, 13, that, when he got served an order on that, he, I don't know, what did, what did he do? He moved it, what did he do when he got it? He, he fixed the water to a point where it was usable, I think, rather than people taking a hose and trying to get the water out of the, stream. Out of the brook. Right. Doesn't he, he still has to be served this order, right? So, well, he's, we he's, have been to that. he's been served. He's been served he this order. Yes. Yeah. So, I I'm, I'm, I'm going to propose that we move the date up to a week from tomorrow, which will be September 27th. We'll give him one week. I think that's a reasonable amount of time for him to, to either move and it gives us time to think what our action is going to be as well. Second on that? Second. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that what, uh, what are we going to do? Does he get served something tomorrow that says he's now got till the 27th? Uh, does Ron draft something? Do, uh, I don't know. You know, what's going to make him move? A fine? Is he going to have a fine attached to it? Yeah, what, what do we do? If, if, you, if, you, okay. if you change the dates, we we would change the health order. We'd serve him with a final signed health order as soon as we could. And if he violates the health order, then we take it to court. Yeah. So do you want a, a tomorrow draft a, a new order? I, I would change the dates and, so and, and make it and, and sign it tonight. Yeah, yeah, just change the dates and sign it tonight 
and we'd serve it tomorrow. And uh, if he violates it, um, we would uh, file a complaint in court like we did last time. Actually, last time I think we threatened to file it in court. I, I served as lawyer with, with what, what I was about to file in court and that prompted compliance. Okay. All right, any other discussion on that? It's a step. All it's a step. Favor. I mean, yeah, that's an action. Yeah. How are we going to know in a week whether or not there's been compliance? I'm going to have to do an inspection. Okay, and so then you would tell the select board? Yeah. But you guys don't meet again until October? We, we can call them. An emergency meeting if need be. Can the tenants report compliance? I'm okay. sorry? Can the tenants report if they've been compliant in a week's time? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah, well, we're in touch. We're in yeah. touch, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll check things out yeah. on Sunday. After having a couple of drinks, I think we'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> Any other yeah, to, to, go to, ahead. To go to court, I, I would need I, I would need Dick to say that there's not compliance, or the tenants to say there's not compliance, and I would need the select board to authorize me to, to, to file suit. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? Uh, yeah, I that when that step takes place, then what happens? I mean, you said yeah, the, the, the one, the, his lawyer negotiated with you and then, just, then they took some action and then you didn't have to go to court. So yeah. is, is, it con ah. is it conceivable that you try to do that step, but if it goes to court, are there, is it then some financial fines involved? I mean, what motivates them from then on? He loses the property, what happens? Property, what happens? Their fines, it, it goes to court, it raises the, the level of <laughs> you know, of, of the seriousness of the offense. Um, so, that, yeah, no, this is an enforcement action. So uh, we negotiated it last time and the select board approved the, uh, the settlement. Um, and, you know, any action has to be approved uh, through the public process uh, by the select board. So there'll, there'll be transparency involved. Yes. Did you hear all that? I, I, I missed part of the question. The, the, any res, I heard any responsibility on the part of Frank, but I, I wasn't sure. I didn't couldn't hear for what. Part of this place, every time is neglect. Is there any responsibility where we are able to see any sort of justice in terms, like financially so that we can figure something else out? Or does he have to pay for a hotel or to house us somewhere else? I mean, there's at least a dozen people that I know of that rent from this man. And if all his properties are taken away or condemned, what happens to the people that live there? Well, you know, right, right now what the, what the town would do would be to issue the health order and to enforce the health order. It, issues beyond that would either require another health order as appropriate or it would be uh, private matters for damages between Frank and his tenants. So how would we seek representation in court to collect damages like that if we're clearly, you know, not resourced enough to do so? Yeah, right now the, yeah, right now the select board's job is to enforce the, um, the, the health code and, you know, private damages beyond that, um, you'd have to consult uh, an attorney. Any final discussion on that motion? Ray's motion was to uh, shorten shorten the date, shorten up the time frame, and so now it is 
on or before September 27, 2022. And and I would I would say that's across the board for everything. I, yes. None of this, none of this May 15th. So everything's going to be changed to September 27th. So all in favor of that, say aye. 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 Okay. Sasha will be in touch in the morning. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. So, you know, I'm at the You guys all set with me? Yes. Yes, thanks for You can stay in the line. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, good to I'm sure we're going to have a special day. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
some material to get access there? Does anybody recall that or what? I, I don't know. No, no, was no this? material. That no, was on the, the, the relocation of the trail. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this. So you can access this land. Well, there's a right of way from there, but it's across the brook. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Where is this? I don't know if I, uh, I don't think it, I was it, on the board. My Blodgett, yeah, you're, you're on it. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's been gone on so long. It's the, you know, the Blodgett thing. So, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. His okay. access was between the two Blodgett houses, and now it's above um, Mr. Blodgett's house. Yeah. That's, it's not really clearly marked either. That's, I well, I thought that that was part of the deal. I thought the surveyor was going to go out and mark it and we were going to cut the trees so everybody knew where it was. Right. That would be it. <coughs> that was the plan. I remember that distinctly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that's changed or not with this, you know, the whole, the whole time that's gone by. So getting it marked is one thing. Trees, you said? Yes. Because I think Mr. Blodgett at one time said he was going to wanted those trees or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Right. Else? Um, the last thing I have is oh, Mandy. She sent an email about, I guess, with COVID, they've stopped with putting the flag up every day because of the restrictions. I don't know if it's the kids being too close together or what, but she was wondering if there was any ideas for keeping it up and having a light on it. Who's me? The principal. My principal. Keeping it up and having a light on it. I, I know what I use at my house, I have the, the solar ring that goes on the top of the flagpole and it works. I've had it for five years. And a solar ring? Yeah. You can get them at That's a great right place in my yeah. yeah. And it works really well. Okay. And has anybody... Oh, wait. She doesn't want to... I just have to ask one question. They they usually raise the flag they every day. before COVID. Every day they were doing it. And now... Is the concern the still up. even now with it up. the students being around the yep. flagpole yep. and the flag going up and being too close? Yep. <coughs> the last thing I have is the website's had a lot of work done to it, and I just wanted to see if you guys had any feedback or if you could look at it. And I looked at it today. Yeah, it looks good, good to me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah it's easier for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's definitely easier. <laughs> Good. And what about the um, Metro River TV? Their request, $250. I thought they were going to be here. What was that? <laughs> I, 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 I th think they said they tried to, but. Two hundred and fifty, yeah. From ARPA funds. I I would have to pay with the two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know if it should come out of ARPA. I don't know if it should come out of the ARPA either. Yeah. Put it in the budget or something. Yeah. Okay. Do we need a motion? I mean, is that, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. make the motion that we uh, uh, Make a uh, donation of two hundred fifty dollars to Medway Valley. <coughs> I'll second that. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Do you know if that is there any deadline on when you need it, or do you, do you know if it's in terms of the two hundred fifty dollars? Oh, no. I don't know anything about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I didn't know. Well, that's why you were looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what it is. Okay. 
That's all I have. Okay. Ray, do you have something? I think everything I got is uh, either under old or new business. Okay. Callie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think everything I have you know, probably done that too. Okay. Don? Yeah, no, 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 no communication. Okay, then now, I guess, yeah, everything else would be under uh, old business. So, Clark's gonna come. Oh, Clark's not gonna be here. Clark was supposed to be here at seven. So we didn't hear from Clark. <laughs> okay. All right. So old business. Or we can approve the minutes first. I make a motion to approve the minutes of September six. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, so now I'm going all business. Right, go ahead. <clears throat> in okay, so a few things. <clears throat> I met with the uh, ARPA committee last Wednesday. Their main question is what the uh, select board is looking for from them as far as guidance. And I pretty much told him that I think we're going to wait till after Morfest because well, there's going to be some uh, discussion at Morfest on, on the funds mm -hmm. and that they, would, they should plan on coming in to see the select board early, sometime in October, as far as finalizing any recommendations to the board on the ARPA money. Okay. <clears throat> that sounds all right. Um, I told you last week there was a discussion with. Oh, but before you leave that, can we? Can I just the yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I think it's, we we have. I just said this is just a rough draft of, but right now, as far as I know, in in terms of the opera funds, is we've got fifty thousand to CV fiber, right? Right. There was some chat. This is not committed, but maybe using some like a hundred thousand for the tax to, in our tax, reducing the tax. Well, oh. more of a select board fund, you know, okay. discretionary. Yeah. Thing. Then we had uh, twenty-five thousand to the um, neck of the woods, right? We committed to that right. for the yeah. funds, and then we've got the town hall. Twenty-two thousand for the um, <coughs> architectural work. Waterbury ambulance was four, but I think we decided we were either going to maybe budget that or take it from the opera funds. Right. And then um, possibly using a hundred thousand for the tanker truck. So I mean, you know, we we have we've got some of the funds that are happening. Right. Is there a spreadsheet for that? Like a working spreadsheet. <laughs> there is a yeah. 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 yeah, I think yeah. there needs to be. <laughs> yeah, no, so no. we can kind of look, no, you know, understand. what the project is, what it details, yeah. right. the date you want it, the anticipated funds, what you've actually oh, exactly. spent, with the calculations so you can add it out. But I think, I don't know if the opera committee is aware, that's why when they come in, I mean, I don't yeah. know if they're aware. I did forget about the neck of the woods on, but I'll, I'll, I'll let yeah. them know tomorrow. And, it's certainly, I can put together a spreadsheet easy and yeah. just everything. But I do, I do think we said the Waterbury ambulance, we would just do it in the budget like we do other, you know, our other ambulances or something. Right? This was just the drop notes I took when we were talking the night about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there's one with a formula in it, so you can see when you put stuff in, if it pulls it out, that makes it. Uh, so the sidewalk repair, uh, the last time I told you, the landowner, I think it's what, is it Dave? Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. David, okay. Yeah. So I talked to him today and he's okay with Joe going in and fixing as it is. I explained to him that we, we cannot change any of the curbing. We, we're just gonna 
pour it right to the turbine just like it is and uh, we're just going to go with it. 8 inch concrete instead of 5 inch. Mm -hmm. And he was okay with that. Oh, so good. That is going to go forward. Good. Um, yeah. when, is, when is that work going to happen? That should happen, Joe, I, um, I think within the next two weeks now. He was all set up to do it, and then we had that issue, so he went to another job. So. And he's going to be pouring concrete with like a, yes. a truck's coming with Yes. Him? So, you want to try to pour your base at the same time? Is that what you're yeah, getting at? Possibly. I'm trying to work on chasing down the, the, the uh, pole bracket system. Yeah. No, that'd be good. Um, I think we could work but right. I also uh, was talking to a, a, a concrete guy yeah. who said, he, you know, he, when I told him, I said, oh, yeah, well, he might be able to help as well. Yeah. And, and Joe, sure. if you want to try to work with Joe, try yeah, to no, do all no, that together. Yeah. Yeah, no, that'd be good. Be good. Yeah. 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 I don't know if we can be ready in two weeks, but we'll see. <laughs> well, you know. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what Joe's schedule is exactly. Right. I say two weeks, but yeah, it could be, yeah. I don't know. But um, that's all I got for old business. Okay. Kelly, you had some? Uh, well, I guess it's kind of legal trails. Um, it's kind of a mix that actually could be reports of communications too, but um, there's a vehicle up off Lynch Hill that's been there. It's been reported multiple times. It's been reported to the sheriffs. They didn't do anything about it per se. Um, it's still up there and now it's smashed. Yeah. So <laughs> whoever's it was. Whoever it was, one up there rolled it over, smashed all the glass out. Um, there's also two nice tire marks, two holes in where the grant work is done, headed up on chill. So, I, <laughs> don't, I, I don't know what, don't know. I mean, it kind of, it's not really a legal trail, but it's a class four road issue. That we've been going into. But no one knows whose vehicle it was. Mm. I thought uh, thought Sean said that they they knew who the owner was that they reported to the state police. But yeah, it was reported to the sheriffs. It was reported to um, Fish and Game because apparently the sheriffs will not do anything on a cross four road, so you have to report it to Fish and Game. So they were called in. Um, I like I like to see it even the town the town needs to get rid of this car. And we've done we I think we've had to do it before with somebody else's car, but um, what do you think? I mean it's up there, but I think if we know who the person is, if the town's taking care of it, then they should be Bill? getting a bill for it. I mean I'm not opposed to somebody taking care of it at all, but I think if we know who that owner is then. Um, did, did you ever, when we talked a little bit about Sasha, did you hear anything from the state police? No, I, I haven't. Went to the junkyard in one time ago, do us a favor and go, go pick it up. And, yeah. We'd have to bring it to them. Yeah. Someone would have to bring it to them, go up, get it, bring it to them. Um, there's also been a lot of loud night traffic up there as well. which I did let Berlin PD know, and they are going to um, swing a little bit around because they have the bottom half of the road and the top half of the road, so anything that they hear in between, they can stop, but. They did this at all hours of the night. Mm -hmm. These are like hours of the night before going up and down that road. And yeah. it's, it's between two groups of people. Yes. It's either um, Chris? The, uh, I don't think it's him all the time, but it's his friends and acquaintances. Um, Are these some trucks or ATVs or both? Trucks. Trucks. Going up onto the trails and just... They're on the road. 
and out, and then you pull off if they can. But it's trucks. The ATVs aren't the problem. Right? No, there right. hasn't been any any thing. But it's between between Chris at one end of the road and. There's someone else who lives down in the Berlin section. That they have the younger guy and one of his friends will come up. But now that we have camp, that we supposedly have a contract with the Washington County Sheriff and we can pinpoint activity that we want them to check out, can yep. we tell them this one? I don't think they'll do anything more than speeding enforcement. Yeah. But isn't that what they're doing, or they're speeding it, or they're parking it? No, they just... Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure um, Stefan had mentioned in a side comment that someone had a fire up there last weekend and left it burning. Mattresses and box burns. I don't want to quote oh. him that he said that, but... So... It's a wild, wild west up there. I guess so. Well, <laughs> if you... If you talk to Monteith, he will tell you that that road is a wild west, and that's what they've called it for years. <laughs> but the majority is not bad. The majority is not bad. It's a handful. But I'm just it thinking is. coming into hunting season, mm -hmm. get it. Try to get it calmed down before hunting season so that... Because there's a lot of hunters that go up there. Yeah. There's hunting camps on both sides, and there's a lot of people oh, that go up there. Oh, or someone gets mad. Oh. One of the two. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised sergeants or McGill's haven't called. Honestly, I'm really surprised they yeah. haven't called. But who? Um, that sergeant. Yeah. 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 Sergeant. No, Steve. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't. I'm, I'm really surprised they haven't. Hmm. So, I mean, how long do we wait as far as getting a tow truck up there to get rid of that car. I mean, I'd say, I'd say, you know, just do it. And have them send the bill to more town for now. Before we ever can track down who did it, I mean, I, I don't know. The vehicle ID won't tell us who it is. Yeah, I think Stefan knows who it is. Because I think Stefan reported it the first time. So, I think Stefan knows who it is. Or at least, as name, because the sheriffs were going to go track them down to move it off them. We didn't. Can we write a, I mean, I don't know, can we send them, these folks a letter and say, you know, like, hey, can you I don't think to the, you know, your neighbor, you know, your something about. I don't know if the tow truck could even get up there. We have to have a uh, let this tractor and pull it out. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe that is what they did before. They pulled the they pulled the car down the hill and then they got a, a tow truck and got the rest of it. I think. Yeah, yeah, because a, a tow truck's not gonna make it up there. So we'll pull it down to your yard. <laughs> 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 but I mean, the select board couldn't write a letter to these folks and tell them that the, the, their behavior is, you know, uh, affecting their... If, if Stefan knows who it is, I mean, we can ask Stefan tomorrow. It's gone mm -hmm. down. Yeah. I want to say Stefan knows who it is. Hmm. Anyway, all right. <laughs> all right. We'll take some action before it snows, I'm sure. So, you want to talk to Stefan? Or? Yeah, I'm Sasha. Sasha, Sasha yeah. and Stefan, yeah. see what you can find out. And what would we do? Pull it down and put it on a truck or a tow yeah. truck and then bring it to the guy yeah. in Moortown or something? Yeah, or, or whatever. The junk yard and get $300 for it. Mm -hmm. That'd cover the towing, maybe. Yeah. Let's see if we can find out the owner and then maybe we can talk to Nate about getting this track. We pay Nate to get this track up there to get, get it down where our tow truck to get it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. 
Any other? Do you have any other old business? Mm, no, that was okay. it. Okay. John? What? No, I'm, I'm just going, can be carrying along working on some stuff, but I don't really have any major updates from the last meeting. Okay. I forgot a couple of things too. That's one of my business. So I have to go back to old business. Okay. Well, I, um, I want to talk about the pony farm car. Do we have a letter by now? No. Okay. Do we have a letter for GMP? You not in power? No. I didn't know that we were still going to do it because there was more that was found out. No. Now I had it in a in minute. <clears throat> Tom will work with Sasha composing a letter to the resident, that's for this, to remind him of the dangers and then it does say, uh, let's say, left a message, uh, Green Mountain Power for Jared, perhaps going above him should be done and compose another letter to GMP. So I don't know if it was... Definitely, but that's yeah. I mean, it, as I said in that, that email, I don't know how far up you'd have to go. It doesn't seem that it seems like they're they're, they're violating you know environmental laws and and. There's no nobody that really polices it and so on. So, but uh, I, I think uh, something like this is easy enough to, I should think, take care of. So I don't know. If, uh, oh, anyway, just let's let's work on that. Okay. If you need my help, you know, let me know. And they did have cars on Pony Farm yesterday when I came through. There was two, like, right at the end. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I saw one. It was like somebody had to go around. It was like parked, like, right there with the stop sign. It's like, who, who, you know, what's, what's yeah, there you was can't two do that. Like it's, like, it's like ridiculous. But in, in defense of those folks, I've biked, I've been by, and they have a little small blue car that's, they've got it tucked in there is, is, you know, pretty, I mean, I think they're attempting to, I mean, I don't know about when they have one, yes. so they well, have two I, or three I, cars, but the one car is just before their driveway kind of just tucked in there. And that doesn't seem that bad, but I, I agree, when I've seen two cars there, it gets a little dicey. Well, yeah. these weren't even in the driveway. Oh. They no, were no. in the road. Yeah, yeah. This, and, and, okay. and again, and, but... There were no cars in the driveway when I went by last week, and there was just this one car, and I watched somebody pull around it to, to be able to get out to the highway. And I thought maybe that somebody was sitting in the car. I looked, there's nobody sitting in the car or anything. It was just, just there, but there was nobody, no signs of anybody at the house. So I don't know who parks there. Could be their guests, could be, I don't know. Okay, so other old business, uh, let's see, on the list, uh, the, the tanker truck. Yes. That was interesting. That's it just sent. That was one of the things I, so everybody saw that there are used trucks out there. And I'm not, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, it's possible that we could get a good used truck, you know, within fairly quickly. Right. You know, just somebody, somebody would have to go make a road trip and go look at it. Somebody that we can count on. Uh, if we were able to find a truck for half the price. Um, and not have to go to China. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, Pennsylvania or Massachusetts. Yeah, or, right, yeah. You know, someplace, I don't know. I mean, 
it might be worth a shot. Yeah. Oh. Stefan's gone. Yeah, Stefan's gone. The only thing I worry with that is you're going to finance something that is, you know, 96. You're looking at 20 something years old. Right. And you're going to finance it. How, like, is it going to last through your financing? Well, that's exactly right. That's the. That's where I'm like, eh. Yeah. yeah, but there was some. There was some up there in 2010. There was one, yeah, it was 2010 or 11 or something. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about it in terms of whether they would fit the bill for yeah. the fire department, but. But then if we got a new one, it would be, you know, you get something that's 2010. Is it going to last? And that's, so that's already 12 years old. Is it going to last? 10 years, 5 years, 12 more years, a new one, I don't know what the note would seem to be, we have a, a, at least a longer life expectancy for, for the town. And you're probably having it come with a warranty too. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's this pros and, you know, it's like anything you buy used, right? I mean, it can be good or... But if you can get a $100,000 truck, this new truck is four hundred twenty-five thousand. You could still take a hundred thousand dollar truck and put fifty thousand dollars into it, and still be two hundred thousand dollars ahead. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Just saying. You know, uh, no, no. no. Oh, I see. But uh, I'll talk to Stefan some more about that. I mean, I'm not. It's just something to think about. Yeah. 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 The tough part is, is to get someone to be able to expedite that, you know, to do the, the legwork of going right. to look at used ones and maybe all that stuff. So if, if it costs $2,000 to have somebody, you know, to have somebody be our broker. Yeah. It's still, there. Right. maybe there's someone out there who does that sort of thing. I don't know. Yeah. That's true, because I don't think you could ask Stefan to start going around looking at trucks, you know, he's going to. Got a pretty full plate right now as it is, I would think. I mean, yeah. It's not sending them around, traveling around. I don't know. Do like, you think there's such a thing as a tanker truck brokers that don't go around finding a reuse you know, tanker? I think, you know, if we look, we could probably find somebody. And the other thing I was going to mention was the. Uh, I got the, the revised proposal from a site. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, they changed the wording, so they're going to do the reclaiming this year and the paving next year. And so they'll certainly change. The price is still the same. Oh, good. So you can sign this. When you, okay. When you're signing this stuff. Okay. We're all set on that. So they're going to... Terrific. Strip gonna be, it this fall yeah. and then pave it next year. Yeah. So it'll be... It'll, It'll be like a gravel road. Right. Yeah. They'll strip it and grade it up and it'll probably be smoother than what it is now. Right, it's pretty bumpy <laughs> right now. Oh, there's like six inches of difference between the shoulder and where no, the I know. I cycled through there. I yeah. It's tricky. So, and I did talk over with Martin, he, you know, he's in favor of doing it. Yeah. This way. <clears throat> you good? Um, other new business, uh, or actually this is for reports of communications, I, <clears throat> uh, Don and I are actually meeting uh, Peter Lazorczyk, <clears throat> who's with Stone Environmental tomorrow at the next, our next stormwater project over at the sand pit. Okay. And uh, so, um, it, which... And there's someone from Mad River. Well, I don't know if she's going to be there or not because she's, she's just accepted another position. I know, but she's not retiring to the end of the month. Yeah, so right. Yeah, yeah, so maybe there. she'll yeah, yeah. Maybe she'll be there. <clears throat> so. so that's all. That was one of the five projects that they had applied for grant money. 
And um, also, uh, Don and I met when, when he met with Martin regarding the um, moving the flashing light sign. Um, we talked to them about the crosswalk in the village, and it's submitting another one 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 one. But you think that we need to talk with Chris Hunt? Yeah, I found an email. Yes, I found I thought that email. We, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. I thought maybe we should have a conversation with him as we're right. working on the permit. You yeah, know, maybe have a rough draft of the permit with us. Right, right. And then that bring, reminds me that I think you and I need to talk to Chris Hunt as well to, for this at the ready thing. Or have you talked to him? I haven't talked to him. I thought we were all set. No, I mean, Cheryl then sent us another thing saying we're, we're not all set. Oh. Even though you filled it, yeah. We're still in. We're still hanging out there. We have to okay. figure that out. Maybe I'll, call, I'll try calling you during the week. And yeah, we'll call me tomorrow. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we can, we'll, we'll talk tomorrow morning about the, yeah. the other thing. That's all I had for, for old business. Anything else on the list? Well, if there's anyone, I, I'm trying to get someone, but when we were at the town garage uh, in the back, you know, I have someone who can, is gonna fix the trim boards. But before we do that, and I was fortunately there with the tree board, we have, there's a maple back there that we don't really need to take down, so we need to have someone climb. So you have yellow birch. And that was a yellow birch? Yeah. Okay, it didn't look like yellow birch, but whatever. There's a yellow birch there. I'm not, <laughs> not going to argue with the tree guy. But we need someone who will cut, just do the branches, because there's no place, you can't get a truck back there with a, a bucket. Right. So I know a guy who tree climbs, but He's been, you know, like everybody, he's been really busy, so I don't know if anybody else knows someone who's a, All I know a is tree, tree climber. Works. What? All I know is that my favorite tree works. But they, they do it with buckets and stuff. They, not necessarily. They, they do everything. They do everything, yeah. But they have done stuff for the town, too, probably? They did, the, they they did the, the trip. Big, they did the big corn. Oh, so high. they would have all those. Okay. Yeah, they, they have everything. They're not cheap, but they... Yeah. yeah, they're good. Okay, so should we reach out to them or something? It's, it's, it's not a big it's, job. It's, yeah, like it's, that's, that's a thing. Ten branches or something. Just oh, ten branches. Yeah. But they're, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta climb up the tree to get them. You know, because they're some one of the branches is hitting the peak of the building, and that's what knocked the trim <laughs> off. It sounds like you need somebody, you know, an expert to do it. You know. Yeah. No, this guy I have is. I'll try him again. You know, he goes up with ropes and pulleys and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so just, you know, you got to make sure he has the proper insurance. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? New business? Okay, let's sign away. So... We all sign this? It just takes one of us. Yes, you do. No, oh, that. I thought you looked at the print. No, thing, this. So. Yeah, this is the. We probably all have to sign this. Yeah, I yes. think. I think we. The health order. I think we should. I have a feeling we'll be meeting next week.
anybody go make the more test? Yeah. Yeah. Are we the cake judges? That's what I've heard. Well, if you're trying to run up, there's going to be some stiff competition. Johnny's going to make a cake. Karen Warren's making a cake. And Amos is Warren's making a cake. Okay, so this is a break. Well, we don't sign it. Do we sign every page of you? No. I just did that. We just had to do the chocolate, right? And I'm signing the corrected CV fiber agreement. Good. Like that. It's, it's on my phone. I had to sign on my phone. <laughs> oh, that was the way. Clearly, are. Well, I like so what's, you didn't have what's the glasses. Scribble? <laughs> but you did say you didn't have your glasses. So That's not true. That's why. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. I didn't ask for that. All in favor, say hi. Hi. Recording stuff.